welcome to Recess, brought to you by Roadmonk. We're so glad you could take a break with us today. My name is Liz, and I'm the events manager at Roadmonk, and I'll be hosting our Recess session. Along with Recess, Roadmonk also has a podcast called Product to Product um, that you can subscribe to on your preferred podcasting platform. As for Recess, we'll be recording this live session, but we will also be posting the recording uh, with a summary with time codes on our Medium blog in the coming days. Feel free to let us know where you're from, what company you're at, and what role you're in in the chat. Uh, just be sure to toggle your messaging settings to all pan panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your message. Um, also, let us know if you're a repeat attendee. Um, we love seeing that. Today, we have Vanessa, Roadmonk's content marketing specialist, moderating. She'll be taking your questions, so feel free to send them in throughout the conversation, and we'll answer them in the last 10 minutes of this 30-minute session. Be sure to use the Q&A box. It should be located at the bottom of your Zoom panel um, or at the bottom of your screen. Okay, let's get started. So today we have Jason Acosta from Reddit. Welcome, Jason. Hey there, thank you, Liz, for having me. Thanks, we're so excited that you're here. So Jason is currently the Director of Product at Reddit. Um, Jason, just to kick off the conversation, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got involved with the product? Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I studied computer science uh, in undergrad and then um, in 2005, I'm, I'm dating myself here, but in 2005 when I graduated, um, I got a, a job offer at a little company in Mountain View called Google. Um, and it was in a That's partner small. engineering role. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of amazing. Uh, at that time, Google was only 3,600 employees. And I remember thinking that it was huge. Um, but I, I ended up joining to work on a variety of different uh, products there from Google Analytics to Google Checkout to uh, the Open Social Standard, primarily in technical roles. And uh, I remember sort of being out uh, on the customer front line and meeting with a lot of engineers and product managers at client companies and, you know, kind of getting feedback uh, and, and hearing, you know, from them as touch points, like, Hey, you know, we're missing this, or, you know, if you did this, it, it could enable X, Y, Z for us. And I remember sort of always going home from work and playing that game of like, well, what if we did this instead? And like, could that be more beneficial than, than this other thing that they suggested? Or, you know, what if we, we did these things instead? And, um, you know, that was sort of my first sort of foray into the, the product sphere. And, um, you know, I stayed largely in technical roles at Google, but I did notice that there was an ilk uh, or a profile of product manager, at least at Google. And it was very common to see someone who had you know, CS uh, background and then went to business school. So I ended up going to business school, uh, did a PM internship at Facebook the summer that I was in business school, ended up joining Twitter when it was about 350 employees to work on platform, their APIs, uh, was there for a couple of years, went to go join Pinterest as one of the first hundred employees, actually one of the first two product managers on the ads team. Um, got to help build that business from zero to about 100 million in annualized revenue run rate um, and did that for a couple of years, which was wonderful. Got to work on Pinterest analytics for publishers, uh, you know, their, their um, campaign uh, management UI, their ads API, um, all of their billing workflows, uh, and then transitioned over to the consumer team uh, and worked on basically leading the pins team. Um, so everything from like creating rich pins where we could add additional data to the particular pins, uh, recipe information, uh, you know, product data, like, you know, what's the stock, what is the price, um, to, to actually crafting video pins, which ended up, you know, being like, hey, how do we deliver sight sound and motion into the pins? Um, and then after about three and a half years, I ended up transitioning into venture. Uh, I got a really neat opportunity to go work at a firm based out of China. And, I was always intrigued with what was happening with product in East Asia. It was very different. Like, you know, the, the population there had skipped the desktop revolution. They'd gone straight to the mobile device. Uh, it was largely cashless society. They were using the mobile device for basically the mm -hmm. wallet. Um, you had lots of interesting apps like YY and Inka that actually weren't based on ads at all. They were based on 
uh, you know, digital goods and, and virtual gifting is sort of the ads, or I'm sorry, not the non-ads backbone, right, mm. uh, in terms of how the economics of the services work. So I went and did that for, for a couple of years, and it was a wonderful experience. Uh, but I started to get a little bored, in truth. I was like, man, I really miss building. I, I miss being in the thick of, of the action and, and creating real value for users. Um, and so I ended up leaving uh, Venture to go go back and, and get in the game. And so I've been at Reddit now for about a year and a half working on content and communities. Nice. So I'm sure a lot of our uh, attendees today know what Reddit is, but could you just give us a high level overview of what Reddit is and how your role specifically fits into the organization? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Reddit uh, is, I like to say, the world's largest network of communities. Um, and it, it really is sort of bringing this, this concept of, of finding your tribe uh, into the digital world. And, you know, it's been around uh, for about 15 years, but in, in a lot of ways, when Steve, the founder, came back as CEO about five years ago, there was a pretty massive reset. So in, in many ways, it's a 15-year-old company. Uh, in, in a lot of other ways, though, it's, a, it's only a five-year-old company. Uh, but that's really, you know, the, the, the goal of the company is how do we bring a sense of belonging and connectedness uh, to everyone in the world? Um, because I think everybody, you know, has a, uh, a, a tribe defined or a, a topical affinity towards some particular, uh, you know, area in the world. And so, you know, as long as we can connect folks to those things that they find value in, uh, we're doing our job. My particular role is driving the content communities team, which is focused really on, on two uh, important engagement vectors on the service. One is just the, the very sort of concept of community, right? How do we actually manifest a sense of belonging in the service? So when users, uh, you know, come to Reddit, they feel like, yeah, these are, these are my digital people, right? This is my digital tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, and that might be, you know, folks coming together to converse and discuss around politics. It might be just your favorite NFL team or your favorite band. Um, it might be about a TV show that you love, like Game of Thrones. Um, so, you know, being able to establish that sense of community on Reddit, incredibly important. Um, and then also figuring out, as you can imagine, on the content front, how do we get more people uh, you know, sharing and producing content through posts, through comments, and making sure there's a really healthy stock and flow uh, of content on the service. Because I do like to say uh, on Reddit, people come for the content and then they stay mm -hmm. for the communities. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. That also sounds like very true. Like I, I mentioned in pre interview, like I use Reddit. <laughs> and I was like, I relate to that. <laughs> um, so you're really right at the heart of what Reddit is. And you mentioned in the pre-interview, um, part of your role is driving the strategy. So what factors do you consider when developing your strategy? Uh, do you use any specific processes? And also, I really liked how you use the word belonging. How do you work that feeling almost and that concept around your strategy? Yeah, great question. Um, so in terms of like general process, um, and this is sort of Reddit agnostic and just how I like to operate as a, as a product person. Um, I really, really am a big believer in having what I, I like to call the four legged stool where you have a product person, a tech lead, a design lead, uh, and then a data lead and data and product, you know, from a process perspective, I like to say should be working together to very tightly and crisply define what the product or, or rather what the user problem is that you're mm -hmm. setting out to solve. And so that's like the very first step in the process is how do you make sure you're, you're identifying um, and framing up very acutely what the, what the problem is to solve for the user. And at that point, once you have a pretty good sense of like, yeah, this is it, like this is the bounded problem that we're setting out to go solve you know, bring design and engineering in very, very early into the process. Um, and, you know, frankly, let them off the leash, let them, you know, if you trust your counterparts and you should, uh, you know, let them go do their craft. And so, you know, design and engineering, you know, sort of embark with, with you there as a sounding board, of course, 
on setting out to craft a solution to the user problem. And, you know, oftentimes I like to say design sort of brings the concept to life through visual and interaction design, and then engineering breathes life into it, right? Makes the heartbeat. Um, and then you get to a place where you have a concept and your role all the way through is to, you know, be that sounding board, but also to be evaluating the trade-offs, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, solutions don't come in one shape or size, you can go many different paths. And so you want to be evaluating, you know, what the pros and cons are of each path. You want to make sure that the quality of the decision making remains really high because one little compromise uh, to make everybody happy can actually end up having disastrous impact later on down the line on the user experience and on, on the product's chance at success. Um, you want to be time boxing the decisions. It's very easy uh, to kind of wander out in the forest and, and navel gaze uh, instead of like you know focusing on on building something and getting it into the hands of users um, and then all the while you know you certainly want to come back at the end um, and kind of ask yourself amongst the group hey did did we actually solve the problem that we set out to go tackle at the beginning um, and you know to ensure that the answer is yes you you want to be self auditing many many steps along the way right you want to be mm -hmm. making sure that you're you're often checking in with the team and saying hey are we still we're still tackling problem x right we haven't moved on to problem y or z because it's very easy to tack in different directions um and it it tends to happen in very small increments <laughs> on a daily basis but then you get a month out and you're like wait, what are we building again here, right? What are we solving for? Um, so that's like the general, you know, process that I like to use uh, in terms of like product development. In terms of setting, you know, the the strategy, I, I'm always sort of looking at what's the goals of, of the company, what's the mission of, uh, mission of the company and, you know, how do we, enable that through the experiences that we're putting into the hands of users and so you know for for me i'm i'm always thinking about how do we make sure that we have you know a very very large compelling high quality fresh uh, corpus of content um, mm -hmm. hence the content part of the name um, and then how do we make sure that we have like active vibrant communities where people are are coming together as a digital collection um, and conversing about a, you know, a particular topic that, you know, tends to drive a range of emotions. Like I, I've generally found that people have an affinity to, to a particular community because it touches on some emotional nerve for them that might be, you know, fear, it might be hope, it might be pain, it might be pleasure, it might be social inclusion. Um, you know, I, I just joined a, a fitness group on, on Reddit. <laughs> Um, because I'm out of shape given the, the shelter and place orders. I feel that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, it's funny. I was like, I, you know, I've been going back to it to like learn about these exercises you can do inside your home and chatting with people. And one, I'm like, wow, I'm not alone in this, right? There's a lot of people who are feeling that pain. Um, but then the other thing I realized was like, oh, I, I'm gravitating towards this sub because it gives me a sense of hope that in the future I'll be, you know, healthier again. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's sort of like thinking about more strategically, like how do, you know, how do we connect people uh, to experiences that enable the mission of the company? And that's sort of how I try to set up the strategic scaffolding for what we focus on. Very interesting. Uh, you mentioned that you have to be careful about compromising mm -hmm. on certain decisions. How do you ensure that when you have, say, a strategy or a plan put in place, that you do stay close to it and you compromise when, you know, it actually might be beneficial, but then also know when to say, whoa, 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 we have this due in three months is our timeline. This is going to drive us, like, right off the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, do you have this, any specific metrics that you, like, pull your team back to you or how do you, how do you keep on track? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one, I make sure that I carve out an hour every day, typically at the end of the day to kind of be going over more from an editorialized perspective, um, what we're working on, and then checking in to see what the actual status of it is, right? So like, 
you know, are we doing the due diligence and, and practicing good hygiene around, uh, you know, sending notes out for meetings where we're making decisions that might change the path of the product? Are we constantly updating the product specs and making sure that we're capturing, you know, because things naturally evolve, right? As you get more voices in the process, mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to evolve. And then, you know, I always try to, where I can, um, sit in on discussions where things are, are being chatted about. I try not to get in the way. Um, you know, I try to kind of let the respective leads of the team usher in their own destiny, but pressure test, right? Like I like to get involved <laughs> in sort of the pressure testing process and, you know, hey, you know, can we do X, Y, Z? Uh, you know, have you thought about this instead? But the big, the big thing that tends to act as the, the scalable guardrails, uh, are the metrics, right? And so I always will look at what is the behavior that we're trying to incentivize or manufacture um, or just generate more of? Um, mm -hmm. And are we, are we measuring success correctly against that particular behavior? And once I feel like, yeah, we have the right metric, then I'm constantly pointing the respective product teams back to, you know, hey, whatever you're doing, is it driving this mm -hmm. metric? Right now, there are some things like you mentioned that you just have to kind of take into account, like, you know, um, you're, you're down on resourcing, right? And there's just no way that you're going to be able to hit this particular date. Um, or you do realize like, you know what, we made a mistake in the planning process and, and actually like, this would be the better decision to go forward on. Mm -hmm. And you do have to course correct. So there are situations like that. It's, it's case dependent, but I generally find that like, just making sure that the goals are hyper clear and mm -hmm. over communicated um, so that everybody is on the same page. Um, that tends to be the, the right set of guardrails that keeps people on track. Yeah, um, just out of curiosity for uh, the feeling of like creating community or belonging, do you have a way to measure that at Reddit? I feel like that's one thing that uh, product managers talk about is like they want people to be, their product to be sticky. Yeah. Um, I feel like Reddit's very addictive just by, na <laughs> by nature. You can get on a scrolling screen. But yeah. I'm wondering, do you have a metric to measure that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we do have a metric that we look at and we, we call it active communities. And it is a threshold by which we measure, you know, on a rolling time basis, how many events or engagements are happening in this particular community. Um, and we've done a ton of analyses around, you know, without getting into the, the details too much, um, we've done a ton of analyses around like, when does a community tip and become what we call self-growing and self-sustaining, right? Where it gets to a place where like, we don't even need to be involved in like recommendations or uh, discovery surface areas. Like this thing has taken off and it is mm -hmm. snowballing in terms of, you know, acquiring new users, um, generating more posts, generating more comments on a daily basis. And so it kind of hits escape velocity. And that, you know, at that point, we know that it's, it's almost never going to churn, right? Like the retention bar is so high um, that it has basically become, you know, as I mentioned, self-sustaining and self-growing. And we, our team is responsible for growing that particular corpus of, of communities. So we want, we want to activate as many as we can and then retain, you know, virtually all of them. And so that's the way that we measure, hey, you know, are we, are we at a good place with regards to the total breadth of communities on the site? And then we, we apply some additional, you know, filtering layers like Reddit is increasingly becoming a, a global service. And that means you have to be accessible to people from very different backgrounds. They might have mm -hmm. different cultural orientations, different religious backgrounds, um, different political beliefs. Um, and when that starts to play in, you, you have to recognize those differences and accommodate those differences. And so mm -hmm. some of the things we're starting to think about is like, you know, do we have enough sort of age appropriate uh, communities? Do we have enough topical diversity, right? Like, are we, you know, are we doing enough to sort of make the service accessible to everyone? And so that's sort of the next layer of, of filtering that we start to apply of like, you know, okay, well, we think, we think we have a good pulse on what belonging looks like. Mm -hmm. Now do we, now can we scale that to everyone, 
right? Now can we make a sense of belonging available to everybody in the world? Yeah, so we actually have a question that builds off of what we've just been talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone asked, how do you define and cultivate healthy communities that generate meaningful content? How do you define and call bad actors? Yeah, so great question. So the, the healthy stuff is basically, you know, us being able to set moderators up for success and then also set early contributors up for success. And there's, there's a number of different things there. We offer tools to our moderators um, and, and make sure that they have the capabilities that they need to moderate a given community. Um, we certainly do a lot around, um, you know, trying to enable discovery vectors for that particular community. So, you know, we look at things like, how do we make cross posting easily available and drive a level of awareness around that a lot of new mods come on and don't even know uh, that you can do things like cross posting in, in larger related communities, um, subreddit mentions right and sort of holding the hand of the mod and helping them understand like, you can actually like take your sub <laughs> and promote it in other related communities. Um, just last week, as a matter of fact, we launched community invites, which uh, I'm particularly excited about because it gives mods the opportunity to recruit directly into their community. So you can start to invite uh, people to come into your community and join and, and contribute. You can also now invite uh, co-mods. And so that's available on both our iOS client and our Android client. So a lot of it is just giving like the discovery and awareness tools to mods to help them grow and seed the community with an initial group of people. Uh, another thing that's really important, especially in the early days is how do we help the early community members uh, develop uh, a level of momentum around content production, right? Because if there are no posts and comments, it's really hard to engage with people in a conversation. <laughs> about that particular topical area. Um, and so that's another big thing is like, how do we even just send out little reminders like sending push notifications to people saying like, you know, uh, both like driving awareness, like, hey, you should you should make the first post in this community today, right? Um, just mm -hmm. to get that, that wheel turning. Um, and then likewise, closing the loop on the ROI piece and, and sending, you know, a notification or an email saying, by the way, your post got, you know, X number of upvotes and it got Y number of views um, and being able to kind of help establish a positive reinforcement loop so that you can make that, that behavior repeatable, right? And so that's another thing is like really focusing on that sustained content uh, production pipeline for the community. Um, and so like just making sure that those things are all in place is really important. And then on the flip side, on the, the bad actor piece, you know, that's also a, a tooling question more than anything else. And so being able to, um, you know, make sure that mods have like user reports in front of them, that they have the opportunity to, um, you know, temp ban or perma ban users who are like causing problems mm -hmm. uh, in the particular community is very important. You know, I, in a lot of ways, even though it's a double-edged sword and it cuts both ways, I've always been a big fan of the downvote for that reason, because that is, you know, when the community piles in and, and downvotes a comment or a post, you know, in a lot of ways, oftentimes I see that as self-healing and that's like the community saying like, you know, that, that was a negative comment. That was like a negative contribution to the community. Um, and so giving not just the mods, but also the community itself, the, the tools to scalably moderate the community and make sure that like, you know, you can kind of weed out those bad actors. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really important and, and it does have to be scalable. I mean, we, we, have, we have millions of users uh, on the service every day engaging uh, in some form or another. So you, you really want to equip the community to be able to do the self-regulation and the self-healing. Yeah, it gives them a lot of agency and I guess the sense of um, control over something that they really love. Like you said, people go to communities for usually there's emotions tied to it in some way and yeah. so being able to have kind of that control over it. Um, our next question um, says, what languages or geographies is Reddit most focused on growing in and what sorts of strategies have you developed tailored to those contexts? Mm. Yeah, you know, the, the service is pretty strong in the English markets. Uh, already and that's 
by definition of the fact that most of our our content is in English. I think you know looking forward, uh, Reddit you know again has a lot of global aspirations, and so I think the next big phase for us is how do we start to build out um, you know our our non English corpus, and we're already seeing sort of the the embers of that. So you know you do see subs in German, you do see subs in Japanese. Um, and so I, I think, you know, without revealing too much of our go to market playbook, for those <laughs> particular international markets, like, you know, we're seeing certain things that like, work and give us a sense of like other, oh, you know, there's a little smoke there. So we could probably craft the fire. Um, I do think, you know, we'll end up we are an advertising based service. So we'll probably prioritize, you know, more mature ad markets as we look to expand into different, you know, countries. But I think the next big question is like, great, how do we start to enable content and communities in you know, geographies where maybe English is not the predominant, um, you know, mechanism of communication. So mm -hmm. that'll be the next focus area for us is how do we, you know, not just localize the content, but also culturalize the experience. And it's very hard, but it can be done, right? I, I saw this at Twitter when I was there and, you know, that that service worked beautifully in, uh, in everywhere from East Asia to Western Europe. Um, you know, you do you do have to change some things, you know, you can't just kind of expect that you're going to launch and it'll just work. You know, you do have mm -hmm. to, I like to say, culturalize the experience and recognize, you know, the different, um, you know, user expectations, but it, it certainly can be done. And I think we'll be heavily focused on that over the next couple of years. Very interesting. Um, just keeping an eye on the time, uh, we've got about a minute left of the session. So as we wind down, I've got to ask, what's your favorite subreddit? Mm. The close. <laughs> it changes <laughs> it changes every month um i you know for a long time i i'm one of the worst dressed individuals in the valley which is a pretty low bar um but for a long time i really liked male fashion advice because it just gave me a better sense of like oh yeah like there's there's probably better ways to outfit myself um so I, i've always enjoyed that community it's been enormously helpful uh, to me, um, I I like subs where I can get a sense of a, a craft, and they're often very niche. Um, mm -hmm. I discovered one community, Goodyear Welt, where they literally just talk about uh, handmade shoes from cobblers in in England and Italy, um, and it's amazing. Like I had no appreciation for this craft, but they're you know people who sit at cobbler benches for decades and learn how to perfect making a, you know, a handmade shoe. And so, you know, I love communities like that where I can really start to get a flavor uh, of a given topical area that I have no, uh, you know, accommodation with whatsoever. Um, and I can learn. Um, I'm, I'm a big music buff. So I love following communities about bands. Um, so mm -hmm. Fleet Foxes is one of my favorite bands and they're making a new album right now. And so, you know, I'll see that band, their, their lead singer will go on and actually post clips from the studio or like share snippets yeah. of songs and it's awesome because I get to go in and converse with other people who also love that band and, and connect with those folks um, so those are sort of some glimpses of of you know what I gravitate towards on the service mm -hmm. yeah and you might have to uh, nudge that band to do a ask me anything one day <laughs> <laughs> which also seemed very popular um, all right, everyone, uh, we've hit our time. So I'd like to thank Jason for being generous this time and being a guest on Recess and you, the viewer for attending. Jason, where can people find you? Can they look you up on Medium, Twitter, LinkedIn? Yeah, I, I have a blog where I talk a lot about product management and product strategy, and that's just jasoncosta.org. Um, so you can certainly connect with me there. And I, I share a lot of anecdotes and personal experiences on product. Um, and then I'm on Twitter uh, as well, at Jason Costa. And you can certainly feel free to reach out to me there. Okay, great. Um, we will be posting this recording and a summary with time codes on Medium, so look forward to that. Our next recess session will be on September 15th, and we look forward to having you join us. Thanks again for dropping by, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you again, Jason. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>